Hi everyone, welcome to the first episode of the Track Talk, where we will be explaining what this uh, project, this series is about. Joining me is the co-host of the show, uh, Sylvia Schulz, a 400 meter hurdler from Germany and an alumna of Texas Tech University track and field, now back in Europe. Hi, Sylvie. Okay. <laughs> and I'm a former 400 hurdle athlete. <laughs> the main idea of this track talk is to discuss the track and field world, um, covering current hot topics like great performances of athletes and changes in the beautiful sport in different events, as well as conducting interviews with athletes, coaches, physios, who, whoever, honestly, of course, involved in athletics. We believe it's a, it would be a great platform to give the voice to, like I said, not only so-called experts that you can watch on the TV, but also athletes themselves to tell their feelings, for example, about some changes in athletics or what should be done or what is already done and how do they um, like it. Like I said, we want to give them the voice and of course promote athletics because it deserves it. So generally the content we'll be producing in this series is for people who enjoy track and field in general. It's for those who seek more general knowledge, but also insights. It will be so exciting to have chats with athletes, coaches, physiotherapists, federation members, and so on, just to hear their perspectives and get some more insights on their view of things. I think the audience will be able to take away from some behind the scenes insights and learn more about, for example, the importance of a good track. Yes, and it's worth mentioning when you're talking about tracks that the track talk is powered by Konica. You cannot really see the Konica here, but it's here. Uh, <laughs> that's why you can see these episodes on Konica channels. This is a sports flooring company uh, that we work for. And now I would like to people get to know us more so they know who we are, if they don't already. <laughs> so, uh, Sylvia, take us through your athletics career. I mean, how did you start? Why did you choose athletics? And why the 400 meter hurdles? I want to talk too much about myself, so we'll cut the long story short. Um, I've done sports all my life. Uh, it started with tennis, hockey, and then track and field. But I had to choose in high school which one I wanted to um, pursue professionally. So I first did the heptathlon when I was younger um, and even won the Junior African World Championships. Um, but then when I moved to Germany, my coaches um, wanted me to do and try out the 400 meter hurdles. Um, where I excelled as well when I qualified for the World Junior Championships in 2018. And after that, I got a scholarship offer from Texas Tech University, where I won Big 12 championships in my senior year and had an amazing four years, yeah, in America. So that's the story short. <laughs> yeah, but that's an amazing story. How about you? Um, when it comes to me, I used to train athletics when I was a kid, so I wasn't training professionally, but I fell in love with the sport. And I always knew I want to work in it, not as an athlete, but from like the organizational side. So I started to do different sports volunteering. And then I started to do some social media about sports. And that's how I ended up being a sports content creator. So that means I'm recording videos and taking photos at some championships and meetings or uh, yeah, or I'm a host, for example, you can uh, you can see me on the European Athletics page. Uh, taking you through some championships um, so yeah that's how I ended up in athletics I love it it's amazing so I also know this sport from the inside but from a little bit different perspective than an athlete and than, than you so it's good to have our perspectives together who is your athletic inspiration then well Right now, I have so many, I think there are so many athletes that deserve to be inspiration and so many athletes inspire me, both retired athletes, but also athletes right now, like uh, competing and also my friends. But um, I think my all time inspiration, I would say, is Vanda Panfield. This is a, I'm Polish and this is a Polish marathon runner. I am not into marathon at all. I don't run long distances. I'm very bad at it. But <laughs> she is from my hometown, from a small city in Poland. And 
as a kid I always looked up to her she was at different sports events in my city actually as a as an adult when I started to be a sports content creator I got to interview her in my hometown so it was a great like coming back <laughs> with, the, with the legend herself not taking pictures right now because as a kid I took a picture with her <laughs> I mean my mom took a picture of me and her um, but then I actually interviewed her so that was that was well, that's so much fun and exciting too yeah I bet you get to meet a lot of cool athletes and inspirational people with your job too yeah that was very cool and what's your track who is your track icon um honestly I never really had a track icon like one person I wanted to be like or had as inspiration I just think that there are so many great athletes out there to just look up to I mean look at Sydney McLaughlin Levon she ran her first Olympics in 2016 when she was 16 years old and last week she broke her own world record with a time of 50 something and then you get Femke Ball and Kasten Baham, I know, and these are all foreign hurdle athletes, but still they're so great at what they do. And even Usain Bolt and Shelly Ann and so, so many more. So I can't specifically say there's one athlete that I only look up to. Yeah, I totally agree. And that's why I didn't want to say a specific name right now too, like from the athletes that are now competing, because there are so many, so many world records are broken right now and it's up. Amazing. And since we are from different countries, let's talk about what is the recognition of athletics? Uh, because we both have different perspectives from different countries. I'm also very curious uh, to know how it is, for example, in the US, because for me as a European, it seems like a different world, you know? We in Europe have just the nationals and they have Olympic trials. Like they have so many good athletes that actually yeah, I mean, it's just mind blowing. So yeah, and even <laughs> the Olympic trials, there's like three rounds. And it's almost like the Olympics. It's incredible. Yeah, I'm, I'm from Poland, and in my country, I would say even though we have lots of great athletes, and I I think that we in Poland are the best in athletics. I mean, um, the most known sport is still football, but we are not really good anymore at it, let's say. <laughs> let's just see what the Euros uh, were like last week. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's still like people are crazy about football, but they are not really crazy about athletics. And I'm curious why, because I think that in athletics you have so many different events that you can fall in love with. And it offers so much joy to the audience because at one point you can be at the stadium watching high jump, then you can watch sprinters, then you can watch hammer throw. And I just think it's a great sport to commercialize also. But in Poland, it's still like, we cannot fill the stadiums. We're trying, we are promoting it, but we, we really cannot make it more known. And also for our athletes, I really really as i see how it looks from the inside i really admire all the athletes for their hard work and for their sacrifice because like it's so hard to get money from it if you're not in the top like 10 in the world and that is That's such exactly a what I was about to say i mean in america there's way more track and field lovers than in europe i feel like but if we got the recognition in Europe that, that other sports get, I would probably still be doing track, honestly. I mean, I had to pursue my professional career and make money um, or choose to go around track and live off a little sponsorship here and there. And I mean, if you don't, like if you get hurt or don't fulfill your, your agreement or um, your top performance, then the sponsors drop you as well. So it's so risky to do that because you don't earn a lot of money with it either. And it's, I mean, doing something you love. So I feel like, if you're not top five in the world, you're not going to, you know, have it easy and make money with track and field. I mean, in Germany, it's very hard to make money with running and track and field. Like in general, it's very hard to make money with it if you don't have a lot of following or let's say top five in the world. Yeah, I, I fully agree. So I think that's the case for for the European uh, countries still. I hope that more, more and more sponsors will find something valuable in athletics because it offers so much so many athletes so many world records breaking uh yeah so i just hope for that 
And let's take us through how it is in the US because you were an al you are an alumna from from the US. So how is this when you are coming there to the scholarship? Is it? I think it's easier, right? In being there. I loved my four years in America because it's totally different. You can combine your studies and sport way better. In Germany, for example, if you choose to do track, you do it at a club, and then you still have to do your studies or your job which you kind of get on top but you can't do a job fully and still do track at a professional level because it takes so much of your time and energy and it's psychologically so hard so i feel like in america i had a huge chance to you know focus on track while pursuing my studies as well because the the coaches and the professors work together to get us to the meets and then if we miss an exam or something we can push it back or forward and um, write it afterwards or before the others take the exam and stuff so they do it pretty well I feel like yeah I think all the athletes and you two must have a pretty good mental health to do all of it I, I'm speaking for myself but I had a lot of ups and downs as well I mean in track in, in general, it's very hard on your mental health because you need to eat correctly. You can't party. You need to, you know, always be on top of your game. And then the pressure of the, the track meets and stuff. And, and also, I mean, there is one downside. You have to keep up your performance to keep your scholarship as well. So there's not only um, positives about studying in the U.S., but there is a lot more than um, studying and doing track in Europe. So stay tuned for more episodes of Track Talk because we will be talking about mental health definitely too. But talking about meetings, tracks and sports flooring, did you honestly take care about the tracks you ran on throughout your career? Or is it something that you educated on just when you entered the Konica and you started to work with? If I'm being really honest, I learned more about tracks through working with Konica. I did not know what the difference between a cast and a rolled out running track was before I started working here. But luckily, I get to now and know more every day. Um, and I'm so excited to tell others more about it and um, maybe people who were as clueless as I was. Yeah, also for me, um, before, I didn't really know much about tracks. I didn't really take care. But when I entered Konica, when I started to work with, I like, I was in the shock, like how how impactful can be the track. I mean, how how much impact the track can have on an athlete's performance. Of course, the most important thing and like eighty percent of success or ninety, I don't know the the percentage, but like is the hard work, mental health, and all of that. But I think that track can slightly help you in achieving the goals because and I, I especially learned about it when I was in Offenburg in the lab when the like professor were talking about the importance of track and so on and so on and I think it would be good to have workshops like this also for athletes to educate them because and, and actually after last Olympics in Tokyo I remember that uh, I was already working with Konica and I was like oh this is why you need to know a little bit about tracks <laughs> because like there yeah. were so many I feel like yeah. the athletes can also influence what kind of tracks they are going to practice on and what they tracks they're going to run on and stuff so that's very important javelin throw there was like a big controversy after tokyo so i think and i think from from that point generally the view on the tracks changed a little bit but i still think we can educate athletes more um, maybe such workshops would help them to adapt to different tracks. What do you think? I think that will be very helpful and I think um, we're already working on something like that. So, Do you have your favorite track or favorite stadium that you ran on? Oh my god, I personally love the one um, uh, in the Letzigrund Stadium in Zurich where the Diamond League um, Weltklasse Zurich takes place without sounding biased but I just love that track. It's the perfect combination and yeah, I mean, I'm saying without being biased because it is a Konica VMAX track, but I can uh, tell you that a lot of athletes like um, Femke and Usain Bolt and uh, yeah, a lot more, they love the track. I also like the, both the track and the stadium in Let's Grande. It's so, so, so good. Yeah, and I think also the, the whole atmosphere at Vectas uh -huh. just makes it immaculate. Yeah, it always seems like the stadium is so full. 
I mean, in athletics, it's not so usual, but... It's already sold out, and it's yeah. only going to be in on the 5th of September, and it's already sold out. <laughs> amazing, amazing. That's good to hear. Um, yeah, and I think that's it for the episode one. Thank you for this short interview, for the short introduction. Big thanks to everyone watching us and listening to us. This was the first episode of the Track Talk. Stay tuned for the second one, in which we'll take you through the season so far with Sylvia of course um, and we will also predict some Olympic results maybe and have a chat with one and only Lash Frunger so yeah see you soon Bye.